Well, welcome everybody to Cameras, Cancer and Consciousness. Um, and this is like a bizarre, really weird concept. And I had a great difficulty in trying to sell it because it's, it's, it's totally different and it's new and it's like two million years in front of its time. Um, how many of you function like that, yeah? You have these great ideas and, and you put it out there and nobody buys it. And then, of course, where do you go? You go to the wrongness of you rather than looking at, oh, I'm, I'm just ahead of my time. So we, we, I came up with this idea because I'm a, uh, oh, I haven't got my camera with me. Oh, my God, I just got my camera. I came up with the idea of this class a year ago uh, because I, a lot of people were saying, wow, your shots are so amazing. And this is the camera that I use mainly, which is a Canon EOS 600D. Like, I'll get, hang on, just stop there. So I came up with this uh, course a year ago uh, and I wanted to show some of my photographs because I am a professional photographer and um, I also would like to sell more of my photographs. So I thought it was a cunning way to get people to come in, have a look at my photographs, talk about what, I, what it is that I do when I take photography and then sell them the photos at the end of the, end of the class. So there will be an opportunity if you want to, to buy you know, big print size, not little ones like these ones, but huge, huge motherfucker ones, you know, um, if, if, you, if you'd like to. Um, and also, I, I sell, if you go to my website, um, which I've just revamped, you'll notice uh, all the photos that are on there are my own shots. And I thought that would be a fun way to start creating um, more with my photographs. So a lot of the uh, banners for my business, which is Curing the Incurable and Access Consciousness and Talk to the Entities, um, are now created from the shots that I am taking, which makes me feel like really cool, you know, and it, and it contributes to me. So um, when I talk about... Um, the camera aspect of it, I'm really talking a lot about not so much the do-do world as in um, the correct way of taking shots, but the way that I take shots. And so, which, which is a bit like multi-level marketing. You know, I'm sure all of you have been involved in a mar mar multi-level marketing at some point in your life. And they say, if you just follow these steps, you will create a big business. And how many of you have followed the steps and nothing happens? It's because when you do their training, the one thing that they don't train you in is being you and following the energy and, and actually creating your life, your business, the way that you would like it. Now, I'm not saying throw, out, throw the baby out with the bath water and don't, uh, don't learn how to use your camera. What I am saying is learn how to use you. Learn, learn about you and what it is that brings you joy and what it is that, that is exciting for you. So for me, you know, maybe I won't, maybe I won't sell any photographs, but they're always contributing to me. I share them throughout the world on all of my pr promotional material and my website and, and that makes me feel good, you know. So, so there's the cameras and the consciousness part and the consciousness part are all tools from something called access consciousness. And we may well use the clearing statement um, Good, bear, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine short boys and beyonds. Now, don't worry if you don't understand it. It's just going to the energy of something where it's locked up. It's basically clearing the judgments or the decisions that you've made around a particular thing, and it will just unlock that. And if you want to know more about that, go to 
um, theclearingstatement.com and there's some great information there um, about all the ins and outs of what it is. But after I do a clearing, you may well feel weird. That is, weird means not normal, yeah? And what, we thought, what I have found, or what we found in Access Consciousness, is that a lot of the people that we work with are people that um, are trying to fit into this reality, trying to be normal, trying to, to become mediocre, and it just doesn't work for us because we're not. We're weird. And so that's the first thing I'd really, really like to, um, to bring up is everywhere where you are trying to fit into being normal and mediocre and never stepping into who you be, will you now give that up and you can give it to Jesus if you like because he is willing to take that rubbish and destroy and uncreate it all. Good and bear, right, run, pop, pop, corn, and shop. I just like doing that because it's, it's fun, you know, like, good. Um, so now I had this idea of doing that a year ago, and um, but I was going through some funky stuff a year ago uh, with uh, a lot of emotional relationship stuff. And at that point in time, I, I shelved the idea, and I basically that was around the time that I chose to create cancer in my life. And it was funny because the day that, the day that I chose to be happy, and I remember rushing into the room um, where my friend Andrew Rigg was and going, hey, I'm choosing to be happy. And it was like, yeah. And um, that evening I also chose, I'm out of here. Oh, I can't stand this reality any longer. And that was really the day that I created cancer in my reality. And lo and behold, um, what occurred was my body started to shut down. Um, the, uh, first of all, it started um, with uh, an ongoing kidney infection that I couldn't shift. A few other bits and pieces showed up, and then this, and then this lump showed up on the on the side of my throat. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, and then uh, I started to be very depressed and very anxious. And so the 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 depression and the anxiousness was really just part of the reality of cancer. Now. Um, when I talk about cancer, I'm actually talking about a reality. And this is, this is the one thing that you're not going to get anywhere else on the entire planet unless you've done a foundation class, uh, unless you've done a, um, some access classes. And um, I am probably the only person on the planet that actually has started to talk about the reality of cancer. So it, it's the same. It, it doesn't matter whether you have cancer or whether you have MS or whether you have uh, um, ulcerative colitis or whether you just have stupidity it's the it's that's where we cut off our awareness it's the reality of stupidity the reality of disease the reality of cancer these are all created realities and so so what occurred was um i i i i had really made a, a decision that i didn't want to be part of this reality any longer and um, so I was, I was on the way out. Um, and things like, things like taking photographs, which is such a joy to me and has brought so much joy to other people. It's, it's just incredible. Uh, like uh, I had a girlfriend um, once that, um, you know, I would take the photographs and she would pose for them. And there was like a, there was like a, communica a communion between myself, my girlfriend, and the camera that was just intense. So no matter what, no matter what I did, if I just went like that, you know, it, it would take a shot of her that was just amazing. And uh, I remember one particular shot uh, I took of her of just, of just uh, drinking a hot chocolate and she had a little moustache on there and she was just smiling and I just went whack like that and it like it was a million dollar shot you know and 
this is this is what we can have when we have this joy in our life and i no longer when i created the cancer i no longer had that joy in my life um and if and and people would say to me find some joy in your life find what what is it that you love doing you love you love taking uh photos liam and you're really good at it why don't you do some of that because i wanted to die um and it just uh, it, I, I wanted to die, so I lost all my I, I lost all my joy and my gratitude and my peace for for this reality, which is crazy, which is weird, which is stupid, um, and it's also just a choice. So even if you have created something in your reality, whether it's a cancer, a disease, or a relationship where you just don't feel like you want to live anymore. It is just a choice. Now, the, the number, of, number of people that have said to me, Liam, it's a choice, before I actually chose to live, it was like I want to just ram my fist down their throat. Um, but it is. And, it, and until you actually choose it, um, if you're wanting to ram your fist down somebody's throat because, they keep up, because people keep on saying it's a choice, then there's something there. If, there's a re if there is a resistance to something, um, there is something there for you to look at, yeah? So for me, it's, and, and I've been facilitating these access consciousness tools for 13 years now, but I was also facilitating consciousness before that, and it's always been, you know, whether, whatever thoughts, feelings, and emotions or points of view are coming up, or whether there is a resistance there, um, it, it, this has always been a doorway for me. It's, not, it's never been, uh, it, it, you know, when I'm in it, okay, cool. But when I look back on it and I, I go, wow, actually there was something there and that was, that was actually a gift if I was willing to step through that doorway. So the tools that I use with a camera are the same tools <clears throat> that I use with cancer. Now, I would like to say that I don't have the cancer, or that I'm not being sucked in by the cancer reality, but obviously there is still something there. So there's what, what else is possible here? And when we go into question, um, you can have a different reality show up and it's hidden right there in the Bible. So are seven or eight other things that are um, uh, that actually ring true for me and ring true for a lot of people. They're sort of like laws of the universe, and it's not. They're not laws of the universe in the way that in the way that there are laws in this reality that you have to follow. It's like ask and you shall receive. And so if you're willing to ask the question, it means that you're willing to receive a different possibility. But most people don't want to ask a question because it means that they will receive a different possibility. And that possibility is usually something that includes change. And most people do not want change. They have decided what it is that they want they have an expectation, they have a projection, they have an idea of what it's going to be. So, now I'm going to talk a little bit about projections and expectations, separations and judgments. What Access calls Pez Juniors, yeah? Okay, so we're just going to say Pez Juniors from now on and if you forget what that is, Maybe someone can type that down in there. It's projections, expectations, separations, rejections, and judgments. Now, one of the things is, I've got my notes here. Of course, I haven't done any of that. Um, one, one of the things is, um, what's, I'm going to ask you a question. What's the difference between an amateur photographer and a professional photographer? Now, a professional, a professional photographer, 
Thanks, Julie. I knew it would be you that wrote that in there. And now Jennifer's on it. Um, a professional photographer receives money for what it is that they do. An amateur doesn't. What this actually is all based around is judgment. A professional is willing to receive judgment for their shots. An amateur is, uh, is often not willing to receive judgment for their, for their shots. So the first thing to do is to clear all the PES juniors, all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections and judgments you have around this class, okay? So everywhere where you have got a projection or an expectation of what you're going to get out of this class, would you now be willing to destroy and uncreate all of that and return it to sender? Because you probably didn't create it in the first place. Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, short boys and beyonds. Now, if you're an artist of any description, um, you, you want to you wanna clear all the projections, expectations, separations and judgments of your, of your, of your camera, uh, of your shots. And even going back one step further, when you get your camera out, like yeah, yesterday I'm, I'm creating this uh, quote unquote mind movie about, um, uh, about, going to the gym because I have create, I have started going to the gym. I'm just loving it. I've been there three weeks, you know, like I put on seven kilos and my body, my entire body is starting to change. My posture is starting to change too. And it's giving me a lot more um, self-confidence in that I'm starting to commune more with my body. Now, so when you have a, uh, when you, when I went there to take some photographs of um, the gym equipment, there were people in there and I started to become self-conscious. Self-conscious is just another way of saying, going into judgment of yourself. Yeah. It's not that you're becoming conscious. It's an oxymoron, self-conscious. It really, it's just self-judgment. So I had to, I, I just decided to destroy and uncreate all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections, and judgments um, about me taking those shots. And then I took the shots. And then, and then what, what you want to do is when you've taken your shot, when you look at it, you're going to look at it from judgment because this is what we're taught to do in this reality. So you want to you want to you want to destroy and uncreate all your projections, expectations, all your Pez Juniors of that photograph, and what you will start to see is what's really in the photograph, and not what what you've projected on there, not your judgments, not everywhere where you've made yourself wrong or where other people have judged the, the, the shot, but what's actually there. And what that means is that then you can receive the gift of what that photo is. And that means that your life will start to expand and you will start to have more self-confidence in the shots that you're taking. So, if you bring that to cancer and you have a cancer that you can physically see, Voila, um, it's a tumour or a lump in my, in my neck. It's every time that I go into a mirror, if I go into poor pitiful me, oh my God, that, is that getting bigger? Is it getting smaller? These are not questions that create. These are questions that are creating more of that cancer reality. So what happens is that you project all of those expectations, separations, rejections, and judgments into the mirror, which is exactly the same as a photograph. And you may well have seen on my Facebook page some of the photographs 
when the tumor was like four or five times the size of that. And so every time that I look at those photographs, I have to be willing to destroy and uncreate all the projections, expectations, um, judgments and separations and rejections that I have of me and what I've created because it is a creation. Just like a camera shot is a creation, a cancer is also a creation. And if you can get to the point where you're willing to acknowledge that you had some hand in creating your photograph or a cancer, then it's sort of like, that's the first step to going, oh, I created it. How cool am I? So even if your shot is a terrible shot, what if you just acknowledge that you are the creator of a crap shot? It's not a rightness or a wrongness. It's just that you're acknowledging your creative capacities. And that gives you a huge springboard for when those shots show up that are so much more dynamic. And uh, every shot that you will do will be from that basis of communion. And so with the cancer reality, as soon as you look in the mirror and you start to destroy and uncreate all your projections, expectations, separations and rejections and judgments around that, you can actually start to acknowledge your creation and that gives you the springboard to creating a totally different reality. Now, I've said it twice because one's for camera and one's for cancer. Now, if you have cancer, the re part of the reason I wanted to do ca cancer and cameras in the same sentence is because it's, it's all very similar. And if, if you do have cancer, you've probably made it significant somewhere. And what you make significant gets to control your reality. So if we look at the tools, and, and, if, you, and if you're just a, um, everybody, everybody is a photographer, because you all have iPhones, yeah? And everybody takes a photograph on an iPhone these days. So if you, if, if you, if you have cancer and you're willing to look at um, how to use these tools with your camera, because you won't have the amount of significance on a camera as you do on cancer. So it might not be photography for you. Take, if you have cancer, take some of these tools and apply them to an area of your life where you don't have the um, significance on it. And what you'll, start, what, what you'll start to see is that you'll start to create a joy in that area of your life. And then you can start to transpose that to, you, to the cancer reality that you're buying into. So anywhere where you have made um, your photographs significant, would you now be willing to recant the sin, revoke, reclaim, renounce, announce, destroy, and uncreate all of that? Good and bare, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, eyes, short, boys, and beyonds. Anywhere where you've made cancer significant, would you now be willing to destroy and uncreate all of that? Good and bare, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, eyes, short, boys, and beyonds. Is any of this making sense or am I just lab labbing? Yeah? Okay, cool. Thumbs up. Don't forget, if you, have an, if you have a question, you can ask a question at any time. So going, going back to uh, my life as a kid, when I was, uh, I would say, around 10 years old, I wanted to get a camera. And I, 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 so I had one given to me for my birthday. I saved up enough money to uh, uh, get a roll of film developed. Now, to get a roll of film developed in those days was a very expensive process. But I took this camera and I had so much joy in it. It was like, yes! And I got my, um, I don't know if you guys remember the movie, uh, the series Space 1999. Um, you know, 1999 was in the future <laughs> when I was 10 years old. So it was a show about the future. Now it's a show about the past. Um, but I had this toy uh, spacecraft from Space 1999. 
and I went out into the garden and I positioned it in 30 different, 36 different ways and I took 36 shots um, of this, of this um, toy. And you know, like my mum and everybody around me judged me as being cuckoo, weird. Why would I take shots of a toy 36 times? Because I was playing. It was a joy for me. And then I got, I got all of the, I got all of the pictures back. I don't have them anymore. But everybody judged them. Man, it destroyed the fucking joy. And then I realized that I couldn't afford this. Um, I couldn't afford this joy. So I put it on the back burners. But what, what I did in the meantime was, okay, um, I, I can't, because photo development in those days was very expensive and I didn't have the tools. So I, I created my own tool and this was my tool. And everywhere I went, I would start to look at things like, like this. So, and I picked it up from a movie somewhere where they, or where they were talking about directors and directors often use this for some reason so they can get the focus on things. And so I went through life looking like this. And so uh, I, I look at my life a lot from the shots and what that has created for me is this, a, is this capacity to be able to see things in things and bring that thing that is in that shot into reality. And it, it, wasn't, until, it wasn't until my 30s when I met my wife and we were driving along and I saw this piece of timber on the ground and I said, oh, I have to come back and pick that up. That's the table that we've been looking for. And she went, what? It's just a crappy piece of timber. And I went, no, it's a table. Because I, I, could, I could see what was in that. And great, great artists and sculptures, well, great sculptures have this capacity to, to look at a piece of um, granite and, and see the, the sculpture there beforehand. Because they have this capacity and they've also trained themselves in that way. So how do you perceive reality that you're not acknowledging that's creating the cancer or the reality called cancer, the reality called fucked up, the reality called stupidity? And everywhere where you're unwilling to acknowledge your, those, what you perceive, would you now be willing to destroy and uncreate all of that? Good and bear, right, run, pop, pop, all nine, short boys and beyonds. Now, thank God for access because I, 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 look at, um, I look at cancer in such a different way to most people on the planet. And it was like, Julie, I'm glad Julie's on here because um, uh, she, I, I asked a question to her and her question was, uh, Liam, what are you dying to get out of? Now, it wasn't the first time I heard that question. And basically, if I could have shoved my hand down the camera, I would have grabbed her by the throat and throttled her. So it was a good, good job that she was in Salt Lake City and I was in Australia. I um, knew it. <laughs> I said I knew it too. Yeah. <laughs> I was really hesitant to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't the first time that somebody asked me that. And that's probably why I was getting so, yeah. But it was the first time that I was willing to hear that. And um, so being willing to hear that, it allowed me to perceive something different. And it, it's, so a lot of things are just about our perspective in life, our point of view. And this is where the camera comes into it because it's our point of view that creates our reality. It's our point of view that creates the, the reality of cancer. It's our point of view that creates 
the, the, the final photograph. And so if we have a point of view that we're fucked up or that the shot is a load of rubbish, then that's what we're projecting in that. And everybody else will pick up that projection, including you. It's just mirrored back to you. So, every, so it's as simple as if you want a different reality, change your point of view. If you want a different shot, change your perspective. Uh, now, <clears throat> when you're willing to ask questions and receive a different possibility, things show up in your reality that, that will give you that awareness or will, or will contribute to you and your body or to your camera work. And so I'd been asking for some, <clears throat> what I could be doing with the camera. And on the, on the events page, I, uh, I put this video up and it, it's a guy that, that actually teaches you how to take photographs with, a, with, a, um, with an iPhone. I'm not specifically gonna do that today, but one, one of the things that came out of that was he was talking about changing the perspective. And it was like, wow, that's all you gotta do with cancer is change your perspective. And once you had a different perspective on it, you can change that reality. Now, that sounds easy, and it is. And for some people, bam, you can do that. In my book, Curing the Incurable, which if you haven't got, would be probably a good one to get if you have a disease. Um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say now. Changing this perspective. Oh. Now, I talk about a woman in that um, that uh, went to a bars class with a brain tumour and she had a few weeks to live and she couldn't walk more than uh, 30 minutes from the car to the house. Literally, once she walked from the car to the house to get a bars in the bars class, that was it. She was out for the day. She had a bars run and or in the class uh, and in those days it was just you run someone's bars they run your bars that's it end of class she walked from that class she just decided to go for a walk and she walked two kilometers and um she had rung her husband to come and pick her up and, and uh, he drove past her looked at her uh, directly, but because he had the projections, expectations, separations and rejections about the cancer and the cancer reality and what she was capable of, he couldn't even recognise his own wife walking along the street. When he got to the house, they said, oh, she's gone for a walk. And then he went, oh, yeah. that was the woman that I passed. I can't remember her name now. She went to the doctors that week and the brain tumour was gone. Now, this is how easy it can be when you're willing to change your perspective, when you're willing to let go of all the points of view that are creating the cancer reality or creating um, crap shots, okay? And if you don't get it that easy, it's not a rightness or a wrongness. It's just that there's another possibility waiting for you if you're willing to choose it. And so it's always an ongoing unfolding of consciousness, of communion. And you don't just have, you remember the story I was talking about, the girlfriend, the camera and, and me. It's not just about the communion that you have with the camera, the subject and you. It's about every molecule that's in between and every molecule that is around you, you have to be willing to have communion with absolutely everything. And this is one of the things that when we talk about relationships, that a lot of people are not willing to look at is that they say, I want, a, I want a communion with someone. You can't have a communion until you have the communion with everything, including yourself. So how many of you judge you? 
Put your hand up. Um, if you judge you, that's, a, that's part of the projections, expectations, separations and judgments. That stops you from having a communion with you. It stops you from having the joy of you. It stops you from having the joy of living. It stops you from having the communion with your body. It stops you from changing anything like that. So all the projections, expectations, separations and judgments that you have of you, of you have of your body, that's keeping you from communion, would you now be willing, with all molecules, would you now be willing to destroy and uncreate all of that? Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, eyes, short, boys and beyonds. So when you, when you choose to take a photograph, um, when you choose to become a photographer, you, you now step into the reality of photography, okay? So most people will have a judgment about photographs and what they are like as a photographer. So as soon as you choose it, you get to have the reality of photography. You get to have the reality of cameras. Um, yeah. Remember when digital photography first came out, I was, I was hesitant about buying a digital camera because I had chosen, right, I would like to start taking shots again. And when I've got, my first camera was a Canon A70 and it was $700. This thing here, which is just one of those little things with a little zoom lens that came out, was very expensive had like two megapixels. This thing here is 18 megapixels. And I got it for $800, which was half price. How does it get any better? And it's got two, two lenses. It's the bottom of the range. But you know what? I just walk around these days like this. And people come and talk to me as if I'm a professional photographer because that's what I create as my reality. Um, I got pulled over in New Zealand for speeding. Oops. <laughs> and um, I had a Mercedes Benz in those days. Um, so, of course, the, and it was a sports car. So, of course, the policeman already had the projections, expectations, separation, the projections that I was in a sports car and I was speeding. I, I was. I was going quite fast. Um, and uh, when he pulled me over, uh, he looked at me and he looked at the camera that was in the car next to me and I lowered my barriers and I destroyed and uncreated all the projections, expectations, separations and judgments. Uh, he still had to give me a ticket, but he managed to do it so it was a ticket of just going over the speed limit it's, instead of doing 70 kilometers over the speed limit, which was 170 kilometers an hour. Um, oops. And as he got out to write the ticket, I said, can I get out my car? I'd like to take a shot of that. Uh, oh, and this is the shot that I should have right now, but it's not uploaded, so and I don't know where it is now. But it was a brilliant shot that I took. Because his barriers were down, my barriers were down. Um, and I just took the camera out and he went, oh, are you a professional photographer? And I said, yes. And he started talking about it and it totally created a different reality. It totally created a different shot. And it was a shot of the mountains with the mists rolling in. And it was a really, really cool shot. Um, now, part of that was because we had destroyed, unbeknown to him, we had destroyed all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections and judgments. I, I, I received the, the, uh, the policeman without um, aggression. My barriers were down. And, he, and his projection was now, hey, look, Liam is really a professional photographer 
And when I showed him the shot, he went, wow, that's a really great shot. Was it? It's just a point of view. Um, but I received it and said, thank you. So how many of you are willing to receive good and bad, right and wrong judgments for what it is that you've created on film or what it is that you've created in your body? Because when you choose cancer, when you go into the doctor's surgery, this is the, this is the, this is the, um, where, where it usually gets solidified in your body. When I came back to Australia, I talked to Gary and Dane, and Gary said, you, like, you want to go to the doctors? And I said, yeah, I've changed my ticket. I'm going back to Australia. I'm going to see the doctor. And, the, and when I went to the doctor, he had a look in my throat. He had a, the bump wasn't as big as this at that stage, but I did have another tumour in my throat, which was a lot bigger. And he looked in there and he said, this is very serious. We it is urgent. We need to get you to get some tests and get you to a specialist immediately. I made it significant. I bought his point of view. And when, when, you, when you make something significant, as Gary said, whatever, make, whatever you make significant controls you. And even with the tools of access, over, the, over that period of time where I was having tests, and it was urgent, and they kept on saying it was urgent, and it was urgent, and it went on for month after month after month before they even started treatment. So it wasn't really that urgent. It was just their point of view. It was just what they had to say so that they can create the significance around cancer. I brought more and more and more into that reality, and I became more and more um, depressed and anxious and wanting to die. Um, and, oh, there's just so much I want to talk about, about that. Pop, 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 pop. Um, so, but the, the cool thing was right there and then I started to pod and pop all the projections, expectations, separations and rejections of the, of, of that doctor. And, uh, I went home and the next day I looked at my throat and the the cat the 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 swelling in the throat had gone down. I went to the doctor that afternoon to do a no, maybe two days later to do a follow up of the biopsy, and I said that that cancer has gone down. And he said, no, that's not possible. I said it has, and he took his little light and he shined it in my throat. He didn't even fucking look. He just went like this. You know, and he said, no, it's definitely got bigger. And I bought his fucking point of view and it grew bigger within 10 seconds. Now, this is, this is where, um, this is where when you're, when you're taking, when you're taking things like f f photographs, you don't have the significance around it. So you can have a great ease with changing how your photographs look very quickly and very easily. But if you have something with cancer and you have a lot of people ha have a lot of projections and expectations around you, you've got to be willing to be on your game. And every time that you look in that mirror and you go, oh, it seems to be getting bigger. That's when you create it. That's when you, that's when you go back into the reality of cancer. And every time that you show a photograph at someone, and someone is a judgmental asshole and they project that onto it and they start judging it and you buy it, that's when it becomes a crap, crap shot. So everything this is just bringing up right now for you and in your bodies, would you now be willing to destroy and uncreate all of that, please? I take it you're all nodding your head. Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, iron, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So, um, I want to do this just for fun. So, I'm going to share the screen now.
And I want to, I want to continue. Hang on, somebody's written something. When you can see the cancer and look in the mirror, it's like a photo. When you can't see it, what then? When you can't see, when you when you can't see the cancer, it's not about not seeing the cancer. It's about being aware. Okay, cool. So um, this is not about um, positive affirmations and going, my cancer's not there, my cancer's not there, my cancer's not there. That's sticking your head in the sand. You know, like it's saying, it's, it's like you've just had a great dump in the toilet and going, oh, my shit smells like roses. No, it smells like shit. Okay. Um, you look in the mirror and you go, oh, wow, hi, cancer. How you doing? What, what if you were actually, or hi, tumour, how you doing? Or hi, lump in the throat, how you doing? Um, what, if you were, what if you were actually willing to commune? Thanks, Tabitha, for that question. What, what if you were actually willing to commune with the cancer? Yeah, and this is, what, this is one of the so cool things. The day that I chose to live which was about, uh, I think it was probably a month after Julie asked me that question, what are you dying to get out of? And I continued on creating and that went wham and I went in, I started to have radiation treatment. Um, the last day of radiation treatment, which I quit after two weeks rather than going for the full seven weeks, um, I didn't know that that was going to be the last day. Um, I just I just chose to start to commune with everything, communing with the camera, communing with your subject, communing with yourself. And I just chose, fuck it, today I'm going to be joyful, no matter what shows up. I'm going to use every tool at my disposal. Some of them were act, most of them were access tools. A few of them were breathing techniques and a meditation technique, but I use the access tools to also heighten those. And every time I went into poor, poor, pitiful me or the feeling of it, I would use a tool. My major tool that day was all of life comes to me with ease, joy and glory. And I'm fucking choosing it and I'm fucking having it and I'm going to be that intense with it. And all day, the joy quotient expanded to such a degree that what occurred was that I was lying on the radiation table and it was the first time that I received the treatment. It was the, before that, I'm going, why the hell are they calling this a treatment? It is not a treat to have all of your cells, including your jaw and your saliva glands, and um, having all of, the, all of the hair follicles die, and that's not a treat for me. <laughs> um, the pain subsided by 90%. It was the first time that I was actually able to lie on the table um, because at that point I couldn't move my head backwards. Um, it was the first time that the machine didn't break down for me in 14 treatments. Um, it was the first time that they were able to get me on the table um, and not have to manoeuvre everything 15 times, which takes an extra 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and it was the first time that I was actually able to commune with the machine. Now, I know that that might sound completely nutty, but it was like, Everybody had a projection, expectation, separation, rejection and judgment of that machine. It always breaks down, it never works. Nobody was willing to have the gratitude for that machine. Nobody was willing to go, I am so grateful for you. And uh, even as I speak now, and I'm getting the goosebumps all over me because of that gratitude and that joy, and I'm stepping into being that energy right now. And that's what you have to be. You have to be that energy. Not just willing to be it now, but if it's a life and death situation, it, which is just a choice, if you really want to change it, 
You have to be it. Because if you're not willing to be it, you can't receive. And if you're not willing to receive, then you can't have a different possibility. I was willing to be that joy to such a degree that I picked up that, those projections on that machine. I cleared them and it was just absolutely magnificent. It was the day of joy. It was, the, it was this is what I want my life to be. This is joy. I hadn't had that for years. Yeah. So um, not to that intensity. And so uh, that was the day that I chose to live. Now, it wasn't a choice, I'm choosing to live today. It was a choice to be the joy. And in that 10 seconds, I didn't care about the cancer. There because I had changed my perspective. It's just a cancer. It's just a, a reality of cancer. A reality of cancer, is it greater than the reality of joy? Is the, is the reality of cancer greater than the reality of politics? No, they're all just realities. They're all just a point of view. It just depends on where your perspective is, what your point of view is. And so having a camera and playing with a camera is such a great way to find out different perspectives. So going back to the story with that guy with the iPhone is that he talks about perspectives. And one of the things is, if you want to take a shot, get down to the perspective of the molecule of the subject. Yeah? If you want to take a shot of children, don't take a shot of a ch child from your perspective. Take a shot of the child from their perspective. Now, children, you know, two, three year, four years old kids, they are not six foot tall. They're two foot tall, a foot tall. So you get down there and you get in their face. If that's the pick, or their bum, if you want a bum shot, whatever it is, you know. Oh. This is not a paedophilia, of course. Pop up. Um, whatever, whatever that, whatever, whatever the subject is, and that's part of the communion. Yeah. So you get, so you change your perspective, and the the amazing thing is that it can change the shot amazingly. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to share my screen right now. Um, God, I hope I haven't got the porn up. How does it get any better than that? Uh, here we go. We're going to go down to flowers. I don't know why I put it in there because I'd remember it basically. Now, if you can't see this, I'm going to talk you through it anyway. Um, it's taking a little while to upload. Ah, let's use this one. You see, you see this shot here is um, a shot of a bolt that's holding part of a bridge together. Now, that this one is actually out of focus. But if you look at, if you look. Um, at the bolt, and you look like uh, two centimeters in front of it, you can see that's where the that's where the perspective is. That is where your perspective is. It's actually focused on the wood, not on the bolt. Now, that's not a million dollar shot. So when I looked at that in the screen finder of my um, camera, I went, "Hmm, that's interesting." It's a it's an interesting shot, but it's not a million dollar shot. So I changed my focus. I changed my perspective and played around with the dials until I got the pity that I didn't have the, the better shot up here. Um, and I took the shot of the bolt. Now, um, I can show you. 
another one uh, where I where I did take that, and it would be. Where are you? Ah, okay. So I'm just going to this photograph now. Sorry if you can't see this, well, tough luck. Um, I'm bringing up another shot now of a shot that I took in New Zealand. And it's part of a, it's part of a fence post. We're just waiting for the Australian internet. Um, and I particularly like this shot. You, you'll have to apologise for. I'll have to apologise for the smoking hot photos on there, just so nobody can steal it. Bastards. But you can see <clears throat> in the background it's blurred, and the focus or my perspective, my point of view, is just on this one piece of equipment that that pulls on the wire. And for me, that is like wow. I'm when I took the shot, I'm really, I'm really communing with everything that's around me and I'm pulling all of that energy into that shot and it comes up as a really good shot. Now, if you were to have that blown up on a, on a big poster-sized picture, it would look really totally amazing. And notice how it's just a little bit off-centre too. When it's off-centre, your eye is drawn to it. So instead of having it right in the middle. If you, have, if you have everything that's perfect and everything that's in the middle, then you're, you're heading for what I call mediocrity. And <clears throat> you're trying to get everything balanced. You're trying to get everything, you're trying to avoid the wrongness and get it all right. But when you actually take a shot that's off center, it pulls, it, it, it's slightly weird. So it pulls you into the photograph. And when somebody is pulled into your photograph, it means that, that they're actually stepping into your reality. So if, if, you, if you're a person that has cancer or if you're dealing like Julie was dealing with me um, who had cancer, if you're dealing with somebody who has cancer and you're functioning from the joy, or if you are somebody who has created cancer and you're functioning from joy, you are not being normal. You are not being mediocre. Uh, you're not being mediocre. You're not buying the significance of the reality of cancer. And what occurs is that that person um, that has the cancer will be will, is now being pulled into the joy, being pulled out of the significance of the reality of cancer and into the reality of joy. And they now have the possibility to have a different perspective, a different point of view. Now, having, luckily for me, um, I, I have, you know, I literally had hundreds of people that are, were willing to maintain that level of joy, maintain that level of presence, no matter what shit that I was going through, so that I would always have, there was always a possibility that I could choose. And that, that's part of the gift of somebody that is facilitating cancer in some way, or somebody that has cancer, or a disease when they don't make it significant and they're still choosing the joy of living. It totally changes reality, not just for you, but for everybody on the planet. Now, one of the things that I've been aware of um, of you know, 13 years of working with bodies and curing the incurable is that um, the reality of cancer is getting stronger by the minute. I would say it's probably a, tr it's probably a, tr a trillion dollar industry. And after the sex industry, it's probably one of the biggest industries on the planet. Um, 
And that's what I call the reality of cancer. And this is something that I personally would like to change. So um, one of the ways that you can help me change that is by buying a photograph. Hey, what a cool cat salesman, yeah? Or, and I will uh, <clears throat> go to my GoFundMe page, uh, which I will put in the follow-up email, and, uh, and give me some money so I can create the book and get it out there and the video series and everything like that so that we can create a different reality. Also, change your fucking point of view. So every time that you go into the poor, poor, pitiful me, what if you destroy and uncreate that? What if you just all, and we've talked a lot about Pez Juniors, all the Pez Juniors that that is, destroy and uncreate it all. Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all known, shorts, boys and beyonds. Because um, that will also contribute to creating a totally different reality. So, um, as you can see, I've got lots of different photos. Uh, I'm not going to go through any other photos. I'm going to come back now. But if you, wanna, if, you want, if you want to go to my website, you go to liamphillips.com and you will find photographs and you can look at those photographs. Um, and if you're willing to look at those photographs and practice changing your point of view of those photographs, that, if you have cancer, that will start to build, oh my God, those muscles are getting big. Um, that will grow those, that muscle of um, you being you and not buying into um, the reality of cancer or any other shit realities that you're buying into. So um, play with that tool. See what, see what shows up. But you... You, but but you, don't, you don't have to do anything. If you really want to change it, you have to make that demand. You have to make that choice. And that's the, that's the last part of what I would like to talk about with regards to uh, cameras, cancer, relationship, money, whatever the fuck it is, whatever reality that you're looking at, is that if you want a, a if if you want a change, if you desire a change, um, you have to demand to be that change. Yeah? Uh, how do I stop sharing? There we go. Um, you have to demand to stop what it is that you're doing. And every time, because you know the, you know the, you know the um, definition of insanity? beating your head against the brick wall, expecting a different result. You know, you're just going to get a bloody head. Yeah. So you have to be willing to do something and be and be and be something different. And you have to choose it. And at, and at the beginning, it's, it's not easy sometimes. Yeah. We have, some of us have trillions of years where we've dedicated ourselves to taking to changing the cancer reality rather than going beyond the cancer reality. So if you can do it in, if you can do it in one area of your life, say with a camera and start going, okay, so what's it going to take for me to, this is a choice. What's it going to take for me to take some really great shots? One out of every 50 will be a million dollar shot. What will that take? Yeah. And then start playing with the camera until you get to a shot that you, that, blows your mind, yeah? And you go, wow, okay? Acknowledge it, okay? And you can do the same with the cancer thing, but you may well have to be a little bit more on your ball game. Every time that you look in the, in the mirror and you see that tumour, or every time that you have that feeling, or every time that there's a pain that runs through your body, what if you, what if you don't go into the feeling of it 
but you go into the awareness of it. What is the awareness here? What am I aware of that I'm trying to avoid? And everything that just, that just brought up, would you now be willing to destroy and uncreate it all? Good, bear, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, short, boys and beyonds. <laughs> cool. Not what I intended, but interesting point of view. I meant that I can't see or feel the tumour, though it is there in, on the CT scan. Yeah. Um, well, is that <clears throat> take the shot of the CT scan and destroy and uncreate all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections and judgments of the CT scan? Well, when I went to the when I went to my specialist, um, uh, the, uh, my first interview, she sat me down. Uh, she talked a little bit about it. She then talked about the treatment, which she had already decided that that's what we were going to do. There was no discussion with it with me. Um, I had to make that discussion. Um, they had already had a team meeting. I wasn't present at the team meeting. Stupid me. How does it get any better than that? And they had decided that I was going to receive radiation on both sides. There's nothing wrong with this side. Uh, we'll just be safe. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and then she proceeded to read to me two pages of um, symptoms of radiation treatment. And by the end of it, I was just, I was just gobsmacked. And for two weeks, I was just like, oh my God, I, you know, I'm just, I'm fucked. I'm, fu I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Um, and then one day I took this tool, projections, expectations, separations, rejections and judgments, and I read through every single one of those symptoms and I, I went, all the projections, expectations, separations and rejections of that are now destroy and uncreate it all. Okay, and then the ones that were more significant to me, like having to have, because I wouldn't be able to swallow, I'd have to have, I have to be fed through a tube into the stomach. That was not acceptable for me. So I just kept on running all the projections, expectations, separations, rejections and judgments until it started to lighten up. And I had about six or seven of those. Um, one, of them, <clears throat> one of them was having radiation on both sides. And then when I went into my interview the next time, um, I, I talked to the specialist. I said, I'm not having it on that side. Um, and it's funny because she already had projections, expectations, separations and judgment. She already had a point of view. All she could hear was I wasn't having radiation. And I had to spend 10 minutes explaining to her that I didn't want it on this side. I just wanted it on that side. But because I said I don't want radiation, that's all she heard. She then cut off receiving any other possibility. So if you do have a CAT scan or a MRI or a X-ray and there is a tumour there, start running all the project, which is, just a, which is just a camera shot, yeah, basically, a very expensive one, but... Um, just run all the projections, expectations, separations and rejections I have on this. You don't even have to look at it. Just put your hand on it and keep on running those projections, expectations, separations and rejections of, uh, on, on this CT scan um, uh, throughout all lifetimes, realities, dimensions, uh, past, present and future and now destroy and uncreate it all. Good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine, short, boys and beyonds. And you can do that with your own personal photography too. Just put your hand on the screen, if it's on the screen or on the, and just run all the projections, expectations, separations and rejections in the mirror. If you're looking in the mirror at your body, um, 
you see, the thing is, it, the, when I talk about cancer reality, what I'm actually talking about is the reality of judgment. And, and so whatever it is in your reality, if you run projections, expectations, separation, rejections on all of that across all time, space, dimensions and realities, past, present and future, um, you're destroying and uncreating everywhere where you have aligned and agreed or resisted and reacted to that reality. And when you align and agree or resist and react to a reality, you create more of that reality. It only takes two people to align and agree with a reality for it to become real. So if, if, you, if you're looking at your CT scan with your doctor and you are aligning and agreeing with him that, oh my God, yes, that has got bigger, you're creating the tumor as bigger. If you're resisting and reacting to him or her or it, um, then you are also creating a resistance and reaction, which is also creating the significance of that reality. And one of my uh, one of my friend's clients, he had exactly the same thing, and he was always in resistance. He created exactly the same cancer. He was always in resistance and reaction to everyone. So he was always fighting. And that's where I started to go too. I was always fighting the x-ray machine rather than receiving it. And when you fight it, that's resisting it, you create more of that reality. It was not fun to have your head strapped down and you can't lie like that for more than 10 minutes for up to half an hour and machine breaking down and then having to take the mask on and off, on and off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're, willing to, if you're willing to destroy and uncreate all your projections, expectations, separations, rejections and judgments of the CT scan, of the photograph, of your life, across all time, space, dimensions and realities, past, present and future, good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nine short boys and beyonds and keep going, 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 like. Ah, the lightness is what, you're, what you are searching for, yeah? The lightness is what is true. And anywhere where you look at the CT scan or anywhere where you look at your photo and you go, oh, I don't like it, yeah. that's, that, that's, that's a judgment. That's a lie. That's not real and true for you. Now, for sure, you may well have cancer. For sure, that may not be your best shot. But the more that you judge it, the more you go into projecting at it, the more you create that reality. Everything, this is just bringing up, can we now destroy and create all of that? Good and there, right, run, pop, pop, corner, all nine, short boys and beyonds. I wonder if you could talk to the tumour and ask if there's a way that you could coexist with it without making you sick or killing you, just something that popped in my head. Yeah. Now, there is a lady called Chris Carr, and that's what she's done. She's had, she manages her cancer, and she lives with her cancer, and that works for her, doesn't work for me. What works for you? Yeah? Like, for, for me, last night, was I, I was going down that path of judgment, and I wanted to just basically take a brick and smack that fucking tumour out of my reality. And I indulged in it for a moment or two and then I went, well, there's just, that's resistance and reaction to the maximum, yeah? How does it get any better than that? So then I went, okay, well, what if I commune with the, with the tumour? And I, and I went, well, okay, cool. So I had a conversation with it. And you can do that with your camera. You can have a conversation with it. Practice with it. Camera, show me a great shot. Boom. Now, some of, the, some, of, some of my best shots have been from the camera, not from me. Because yeah? when I'm trying to do a great shot, what I do is, is I try to set things up. I try to control it to the nth degree. How many of you try to control everything to the nth degree? Everything that is, will you now be willing to destroy and uncreate it? Or good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, all nice, short boys and beyonds. Um, share. Where is share? 
are here. Um, let's go to Rome for a minute and I will just quickly show you. I, this is just my own point, personal point of view. Here's a Rome shot. Um, <clears throat> why do I stop talking while we're waiting? Oh my God, pop and pop all of that. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, letting go of um, control. Now, you see this shot here. For me, this is a brilliant shot. Now, it's, it's interesting, yeah? It's different. It's not of a statue in Rome. Everybody's got those ones. Um, this is, this is part of the street of Rome. It's just a series of lights. And I just asked my camera, camera, can you take a great shot for me, please? And I just went like that. And that was the shot that came out of it. You can see the third one is actually the, the focal, focal point. But the first light, that they're, they're lights in a series of <clears throat> on, on a footpath. The first one, because it's out of focus, it's sort of like you look at it and you go, what is it? You create a question. And this is, this is something like with, with a cancer such as the one that I've created, um, it's very obvious, it's very in your face. It's very, you know, people look at it, those people that actually look at you, which, is, which, which I found is not many people. Um, uh, it, it puts, for, for some people they go into judgment, for some people, it goes into question. Those are the people that you're going to find that want to create a different reality. Because when we're in question, we can always, we, we're always willing to receive a different possibility. Oh, that's interesting. What is that? It's curiosity. Uh, everywhere where you bought that curiosity killed the cat, will you return that to sender and destroy and uncreate it all? Good and bear, right, run, pop, pop, all nine, short boys and yams. Yeah, Chris Carr, crazy, sexy cancer. Now, just recently I was on the cancer summit that she was um, delivering. And in her introduction, she was talking about her father has just had cancer recently. She was, she was uh, talking about um, how it, she, these are not the exact words, but this is the flavour of it. She was being interviewed and she said, yeah, my father is just coming out of um, having chemo and um, for a cancer. And it was almost like I had to go through cancer so that we would know um, how to heal him. How many of you are creating shit in your body so that you can show other people or heal other people? Now, she never, she never has questioned that. From my point of view, there is a possibility that Chris Carr created cancer so that she could save her father because she was willing to be aware of what her father was going to create in the future. She had made that commitment. Now, this is just one possibility. How many of you have made a commitment, and I can see Maria smiling there, to your family, your friends, your parents, your teachers, to people in other lifetimes to take out their pain and suffering, to take out their stupidity, to take out their judgment and lock it into your own body. And everything that is, will you now destroy and uncreate it all? Good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, oh, no, short boys. Yes. So I'm going to ask a question. What would it take for Chris Carr, if she's willing to receive that little bit of information and to have a look at it, and to be willing to ask the question, truth, is that true for her? Because if that is true for her, she could come out of only managing it and living it and possibly totally changing it if that's what she desires. Yeah, exactly. And everything that is, can we now destroy and uncreate it? So Jennifer talks about there, it's just something that popped into my head. And, and this is the thing is, is it yours or somebody else's? So when something just pops into your head, 
Now, is it your thought? So, if you're if you're looking at uh, if you're looking at the cancer in your reality or the cancer reality, is it your thought that you're fucked up? Is it your thought that cancer is a death sentence, or is it somebody else's that you're picking up? And if it's somebody else's, do you really want to keep that projection, or do you want to destroy and uncreate? You have to be willing to look at look at it every time. I'm just going to mute everyone. Hang on a minute. Um, you have to be willing to look at it every time that it comes up. Now, just just to finish off, I'm just so excited because this has gone to places that I haven't even thought it would go to. Um, I was talking to my friend Andrew Rigler yesterday and we were looking at money and, um, and he, he, has, he has a money reality that's like a cancer reality or has had. And so when I was living with him when I had the cancer, we were swapping sessions. He would assist me in creating a different reality beyond the cancer reality and I was assisting him in creating a money reality beyond this money reality. And so we were talking about that yesterday and one of the things was is, is that it, it creeps up. Just that one thought that you let go creeps up and starts to create your reality. So with regards to like money, what we found for him was if he did not get, jump on that thought or that feeling or that emotion, um, straight away it had already started to create. I, I remember one time, for example, when I was, um, I, I was stepping into so much joy and I walked into my bedroom and I had a thought like, something like, oh, I think the tumour is getting bigger. And I was so joyful. I remember thinking in my head, oh, I'm so joyful, I'm not even going to deal with that right now. And by not dealing with it right then and then, it created havoc for a, a good week or so. So what if you were willing to be aware, and this is where, this is where it becomes uncomfortable for a while, until you're willing to really be on it and it just becomes part of your reality. That is having that level of awareness. We are not taught in this reality to be aware. We're taught to be fearful. And when we're, when we're in judgment, it's always about avoiding, avoiding the wrongness and getting it right. And that's what creates fear. That's what creates the, the, um, the points, uh, the relational points that holds the distractors of things like fear in place. If you were willing to let go of all of that fear and change your perspective to joy and demand being that, your shots would be amazing and who the fuck cares what anybody else thinks? Or your cancer would change and you would be joyful and you wouldn't give a fuck whether you had it or not. And that's when you have true choice. Any questions? <laughs> that sounded so cool, huh? <clears throat> we'll open it up to questions now if anybody's got any questions. If you haven't got any questions, that's great, Trey. That, that's great too. I would like to ask something, Liam. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, if you create something, you talk about the judgment, but when you create something and you actually create something brilliant and you put it out there and um, people are trying to stop it, how can you deal with that with ease? Well, 
first of all, um, who gives a fuck? If somebody is trying to stop it, does that mean that they have already decided that they're more that you're more powerful than them? Everything that is yeah, now destroy and create it all. Good and bad, right, rum, pop, popcorn, ice, short boys, and beyonds. Cool. Can anybody stop you? Um, no, not really, but I was wondering if, like, how to be, like, put it out there with awareness so it isn't stopped, like. Yeah, but can anybody stop you? No. No. So that's a, that's a point of view that you have that somebody can stop you. All the projections, expectations, separations and rejections that you have a point of view that somebody can stop you, would you now be willing to change your perspective? Like the only one that can stop me is me. So where are you stopping you? And where are you pulling in people that I gonna stop you to prove how powerful that you are that you're the only one that can stop you and everything that is will you now destroy and uncreate it all yeah you're bad right wrong pop pop corn iron short boys and beyond so, it's, um, <clears throat> uh, how many uh, blah, blah 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 um how many of you have got people in your reality or that you are doing the prove it to me? How much receiving is in that? Okay. If somebody is trying to stop you or trying to get you to prove it to them, it means they don't want to receive you. Bye! Go and get a second opinion, a third opinion, a fourth opinion. Until you have somebody or some bodies that are willing to go, wow, you have a different point of view. That's really interesting. How can I contribute to you? And then, and, but you've got to be willing to ask for those people to show up in your reality as well. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, but yeah, but no. It's your point of view creates your reality. So everywhere where you have a point of view that anyone can stop you, um, will you now destroy and uncreate all of that? Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, iron, short, boys and beyonds. If Nelson Mandela had that point of view, would he have created the change on the planet that we've seen? with regards to racism. No. You never give in, never give up, never quit. Okay? And now you want to look at that. What does never give in, never give up, never quit fucking mean? Yeah, people, they never actually ask, Gary, what does that mean? Yeah? Never give up being you. Or never quit being you. Never give in to somebody else's fucking point of view. Yeah. So when, what if you were always willing to question everything? People are trying to stop me. Cool. Yeah, there was one lady recently, um, I was talking about using language with um, the cancer of reality saying that as soon as you call it my cancer, you lock it into your reality. You lock it into your body. It's mine. Yeah, sure. Acknowledge you're the creator of it, but you're just the creator of the cancer. As soon as you make it mine, now it is yours. It's much harder to change. When you talk about it in the third person, the cancer, you can actually have a conversation with it. Um, but what she wanted to do, she said that I was dangerous. I was a very dangerous person 
in expressing those points of view and I could hurt people with that point of view. Oh my God, she was what? Trying to stop me because it didn't match her point of view. She was trying to control me. She was judging me. She was not receiving me. And I went, cool, judgment, awesome. Right there and then, I wrote 10 pages of the book that I'm asking for money for. <laughs> you know, like, wow, thank you so much. That really energized me. So every time somebody judges you, it's just an energy if you're willing to um, lower your barriers and receive it without a point of view, it has no control over you. And you have to be willing to look at that, look at the cancer reality of where is it trying to control you? How many judgments are there that you could be using to your advantage? Like for me, the other day, I wanted, I, I bought some vitamins the next day and um, they were on special for 20% off. And I went, oh, fuck. I'm over this. I'm over this where I'm just spending money willy-nilly and not, and not getting what it is that I'd like. So I rang them up. And, and I used the cancer to get my 20% off. Oh, I've got cancer. You know, I'm spending thousands of dollars a month on supplements. You know, it would just make it so much easier if I could get to 20% off. So they gave me credit. Luckily enough, I wanted, <clears throat> I, I want their vitamins in the future. So they gave me $20 credit. Yeah. Did I really care? No. But I wanted to change something and I was, and was I really buying into the cancer reality? No, I was just using it. I was just using their judgments of cancer to create 20 bucks for me. And uh, maybe that's going into another class. Everything that is, can we now destroy and create it? Or good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, come on, nine, short boys and beyonds. Yeah, can you talk more about receiving judgments? Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in foundation. <laughs> How does it get any better than that? Um, so any last question? Because I've gone, you know, like 34 minutes over time. Oh, actually, this is going to be a half an hour class. It's 90 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just so happy. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to send out this recording. And, you know, like, I, 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 I am going to ask, I am going to ask something of all of you guys that listen to this. Share it. Would you be willing to share this video um, with at least one person? We've had, we've had, a, there's 138 people. You know, like if another 138 people could listen to this stuff, what would that create in the world? You know, like whether you like me, whether you don't like me, that's a judgment, um, is irrelevant. It's like some of the tools in here are so frigging powerful that they literally allow you to jump tracks. And it's, it's, not, about, it's not about destroying this reality or destroying the cancer reality, but going beyond it to create a reality that works for you. Chris Carr, for instance, is creating a reality that works for her. It doesn't work for me. I want something even greater than that. Yeah? So, and that may be the greatness that she's shooting for, and it's not a rightness or a wrongness. And we can all have our own individual realities. It's not a rightness or a wrongness. It's just about creating your own reality. 
And if you have the tools to do it with, and we, ha we have these access consciousness tools that you can use across any platform in any situation. And that's basically why I wanted to do the cameras and the cancer and meld them together to show you that it's possible to use the same tool across a variety of different um, areas of your life, that there is not one magic tool for fucking cancer. It's the same tool as you use for money. It's the same tool that you use for relationships. It's the same tools that you can use to create amazing shots. So if you're willing, please share this with at least one person. I bet you can't do 10. And on that note, well, uh, say goodbye. And thank you all for showing up and sharing um, your valuable time with me. So, ciao. Bye. Thanks, Liam. Bye. Thanks.